Hey everyone, Mark from The Top Homeowner here, and today we have an issue with this hose bib. You can see here that this is loose, it's pulling away from the house, and we only have one screw that's holding this onto the side of the house. So this is a problem for a couple different reasons. The back side of this hose bib is pointing downward, it means it's not going to be able to drain properly. The other problem here is there's no uh, sealant here that's sealing the outside weather from the inside of the house, which is really bad. Uh, we can get water and bugs and everything uh, on the inside of the house unless we get this taken care of. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to show you a couple different ways you can tackle this. Um, one, if you have access to the inside of the wall, what you can do. And also, if you don't have access to the inside of the wall, uh, how you can take care of this problem. For our specific issue, what we have is the place that the screw was screwed into the siding here um, is actually pulled out. So there's no place for the screw to attach uh, to the siding to get this tightened back up. And we're gonna fix this actually from the inside because we do have access to the backside of this wall where this is located. If you don't have access to the inside, then they make a plate that you can purchase that you can install behind uh, this hose bib and that will give you a new connection and mounting point uh, to connect this to the wall. Now, before we get started, it's important that we shut off the water to whatever fixture it is that we're going to be working on in the house when it comes to plumbing. Now, you might have to shut off the water uh, at the main in your house, or it might actually be out the street. But in our case, for this video, we actually have a quarter turn shutoff valve that's installed where the spigot is. So uh, what we're going to do, do is we're just going to turn this off here and then we can get started. Now you might notice I just called this a spigot and earlier I called this a hose bib. Um, there are a couple other names for this that might be used depending on where you are. Um, one other name is called a water hydrant and another name that I've heard is called a silcock. So depending on where you are in the United States and probably in the world, uh, this might have different names. You might just be aware of that if you have to go and replace one of these if you're looking for one in your local hardware store. You can see here now that the spray foam is removed, there's only this one screw holding this in place. So we're gonna take this screw out so it can be out of the way. Now that we have this loose on the outside, we can go ahead and disconnect this PEX hose from the hose bib. Now, again, I do have the water shut off. Make sure you have that shut off before you work on this and complete the step. Uh, in our case, since this is actually just attached with a shark bite connection, this is gonna be really easy to disconnect. Um, we just need to use a couple of adjustable wrenches and uh, unscrew this here. Also make sure you have the water valve turned on on the outside and that'll let the pressure any water that's built up in here uh, allow that to drain on the outside because once we disconnect this here if we don't do that then whatever water is remaining in this line is going to flow on the inside and that's going to create a mess now even though i drain the water on the outside i'm sure there'll still be uh, water that comes in on the inside which that's okay this is plumbing and that's to be expected just make sure you have some rags or something down below to help trap the water and clean up the water uh, when you undo this Again, put that outside. All right, so now that we've got all this out of the way, what we can do is we can take a measurement between this stud and this stud, and we're gonna put a block in here. We're gonna use a two by six in this case, because uh, that's what we have handy. And we're gonna put this right here between the gap, so that'll give us something to screw into that's really solid. So it looks like six and a quarter is gonna do it for us. It might be a little bit tight in a couple spots. We had to shave off a little bit more of this uh, a couple times because the studs inside the wall were twisted. Now we need to do is we need to cut a new hole into this board so that way we can get everything mounted and in place. We're gonna be using a hole saw drill in order to cut the hole and we've measured the uh, hose bib to make sure that that line will fit through this. We don't want the hole to be too big. This is just big enough to let everything pass through the board um, without interfering with the screws. And for our case, this is an inch and a quarter. We took a measurement between the studs and we know that the hole needs to be at three and three eighths of an inch in between. So the center of the hole needs to be here. And then as far as it matters from like top to bottom, we just need to make sure that this is about centered. We don't need to worry about that as much as we need to worry about left to right. And the reason for that is because we can always move this board up or down to line up with the hole before we screw this in place. And we put this on top of another block of wood so that way when we go through this piece of wood, it doesn't hit the concrete below it. Since this cup isn't very deep, then we can only go so far into the stud. So we need to make sure that the drill bit on the inside pokes through uh, this two by six 
and then we can flip it over and start the hole from the other side to finish the job. So we can see here that it's not actually through yet. So since that's the case and we're just about bottomed out here, we might just have to take another drill bit to drill a pilot hole through so that way we know where to start the hole from the other side. And that looks like that's what we have to do. So there's the hole. Now we can flip this over. We can put the hole saw back in place and finish cutting this out here. And I'm kind of just going in circles a little bit with this uh, drill to help eat into the wood. It makes the process a lot easier. Great. So let's dry fit it one last time here. And you can see the holes line up just perfectly. Now we need to get this block attached to these side studs. In order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to drill some pilot holes in here. We just need to attach this to a couple different places so that way it's secured. Um, and we'll start by drilling a couple pilot holes in on the corners here. Uh, one, to make sure that this board doesn't split. And then two, to make it easier since this is such a tight cavity to get this screwed into place. Okay, so first we're going to start straight on to get a hole going. And then we're going to come back in here and go at more of a 45 degree angle. And you want to be careful not to bend uh, the drill bit when you're actually drilling, okay? The point is to just get a hole going. If you bend the drill bit, you're, you're going to actually break this off inside the wood, so don't do that. All right, and we're just going to go in the opposite corner here and do the same thing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take these three inch screws and we're going to start them before we put this block in place. So we're going to put this in the hole here. And we're going to screw it in. And we don't want it to come out the other end, but we want it to be close. So you can see here it's poking out just a little bit. That's probably fine. We can back it off just a smidge so that way it's flush. We'll do the same thing for the other side. And let's make sure we have this in the right spot here. Oh, get it upside down. Let me flip it around. All right, there we go. Make sure this is lined up as best as we can, and then we'll screw it into place. Okay, that's not going anywhere, dad sings. Now, before we put this back in place, we need to make sure all this old silicone caulk is scraped away. So we're gonna do that with a straight blade razor. So we're gonna go with this Alex Ultra 230, which is an exterior uh, based caulk. Um, and uh, this is actually a couple years old now. We haven't used all of it and uh, we can still use it because of this thing. If you don't have one of these and you have caulk and you do these types of jobs, you need to invest in these. These things are great. Um, it keeps the caulk good forever. What we're gonna do to get a nice tight seal is we're gonna caulk around the back of this plate first. We'll put it in place and we'll screw it in. Okay, put this in the hole. And then we'll just run this caulk along the outside to finish up the seal. Pay extra attention to the top because that's where all the water is gonna come in if it does come in. All right, so you can see this is a nice solid connection now. Now we need to get rid of this extra Teflon tape that's around these threads. Now, if we wanted to redo this hose, so that way there's not as much pressure on this line, because you can see here, we have to bend it quite a ways out. Um, we could redo this. We could cut this off and put in a 90 degree elbow here, which looks like this. Basically, it makes a 90 degree connection between two pieces of PEX uh, piping. And then you use clamps in order to connect this uh, to the PEX with a tool like this. Now, in our case, we're not gonna go ahead and do that. Um, this is just fine the way it is. Since we've got a nice solid connection here, I'm not worried about it loosening up again, um, but just know that you do have some options if this is similar to your situation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put brand new Teflon tape on this, these threads. Uh, you wanna make sure you wrap it in the direction that it will screw on, because if you don't, it's gonna want to tend to unravel, and you just need about 
three or four layers on this should be sufficient. And it just helps give the threads a good watertight seal. I'm gonna start this by hand. And then we'll take our wrenches and tighten it the rest of the way. Now we made sure that the hose bib is turned off on the outside and we're gonna go ahead and turn the water back on on the inside and make sure there aren't any leaks. Okay, the water pressure is back on and uh, we're just gonna check this here for a little bit make sure there's no water that starts dripping out. A good way to do that is if you have like a paper towel or a napkin, um, you can tell if there's any water coming out of this connection really easily, but we'll leave it for about five minutes and we'll check it here. And there's no water, so this is a nice solid connection, no leaks. And we'll get this insulation back where it was. So that's really all there is to this. This whole thing could have been avoided if when this house was built, the proper blocking was installed between the studs. If it had enough for these screws to attach to, this would not have loosened up over time like it did. But unfortunately, when this was installed, it was just attached to this wood siding here, which was really thin and it didn't last. So hopefully this helped your situation. If it did, I appreciate you subscribing to the Top Homeowner channel, where our goal is to help you become the best homeowner that you can possibly be. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one. I guess we should probably test this, huh? Yeah, it works.